Hi, this is Nick from Atomic, and today I'm going to talk to you about a new Wi-Fi 6 router so you can make your fiber epic. Now, the one I'm talking about today is the Ray RG EW1800GX Pro. It's on loan to us from Scoop. Thank you, Scoop. And it is suitable for your small office or home office. Now, what do we like about this particular device? So the first thing is it's pretty small. I've seen far more obnoxiously large Wi-Fi routers in the past, um, but this one certainly isn't going to take up a lot of space or uh, take over the whole room. It has a soft white finish. It has these four aerials that are adjustable. And as far as looks go, that is about it. I think it's pretty easy on the eyes. Um, in terms of features, this device has four gigabit LAN ports. It has a gigabit WAN port. It has a power port and it has your reset button on the side. The thing that it's missing is the WPS feature. So if you've got printers or other devices that require the router to have WPS, this is not gonna work for you. The other thing that's great is it's got this mesh feature. So you can buy one or two or three of these. You plug one in, in range of the primary one that's plugged into your fiber. You press the button on the mesh unit and then you press the button again on the primary one and they will create one large Wi-Fi network. And what's cool about that is in the past you'd have to buy a kit of mesh Wi-Fi units and they'd come in packs of two or three. Um, but what's nice about this is you can just buy two and if you're not happy you can then just buy an additional one and it provides you a lot of flexibility. Additionally because it's got the four ports at the back you have far more uh, LAN options on any devices that are connected to the mesh nodes around the house whereas in the past the a lot of the mesh nodes would only have one LAN port which is a bit restrictive. So now I'm gonna show you how to set this thing up, uh, do some Wi-Fi tweaks and enable IPv6 and then we'll do some speed tests. All right now we're going to set up the network and the Wi-Fi. When you've plugged the first one in you'll see that there's an open Ruji network Join that, and when you have, you'll see a captive portal pop up on your screen. Now, once you have this, you can choose whether or not to do the auto upgrade. I'm going to skip that for now, uh, for demonstration purposes, but you can if you like. When you hit configure, you go to the internet settings. Now, on Atomic Access, we use DHCP for our WAN settings, so I don't need to configure any PPPoE settings and this router has automatically detected all the settings it's needed, so I can go ahead and click Next because I don't need to do anything more. The next page is the Wi-Fi settings, so it gives me the option to split out the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, um, but for now, I think it's simpler just to have one Wi-Fi name for both Wi-Fi bands, so I'm going to enable dual band, SSID, I'm gonna name my Wi-Fi atomic access, then I'm going to use a password that's easy to remember and tell my friends when they come to visit. And I'm going to make sure Wi-Fi 6 is enabled. Now it's a good idea to use a different management password uh, than your Wi-Fi password, but for demonstration purposes I'm just going to select same Wi-Fi password for the management password. Very important to choose the right region for your Wi-Fi so you have access to the correct channels for your region and set the time zone for the router as well. Once you've saved that, it will take a few seconds to configure the Wi-Fi and then you'll be able to join the new Wi-Fi name that you've set. So there we go, Atomic Access is showing up and I'm going to join that and head through to my system preferences, into network, um, clicking on advanced and then the TCP IP tab. I'm going to grab the router IP address so that I can go to the router management settings in the browser. So I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to enter the password I just set, which for me is the same as my Wi-Fi password, and I'm going to log in. Now, in my setup, I'm using two of these, one in repeater mode with a hard wire, uh, and it's showing that in the system preferences. So the first thing you want to do is turn on band steering, and this is important so it tells your devices to use the faster 5G Wi-Fi. This is a great performance tip. Now going up to my Wi-Fi settings, I can see my transaction rate is at 1080 megabits, which is almost the maximum 1200, and it's on the physical mode AX, which is the Wi-Fi 6 part. So now we're going to go ahead and check the IPv6 settings. 
So I'm going to test my IPv6 now before I've set it up, and you can see I'm getting 0 out of 10 for IPv6. So to set up IPv6, go to the More section at the top of the router config, click on IPv6 address, toggle on IPv6 address, are you sure OK? And then I'm going to hit Save just in case, but I think it's already saved. Now, um, because it is a network change, I'm going to quickly go to my network settings again in my Mac, go to TCP IP and renew the DHCP lease just to make sure that I get a fresh connection to the router. So when I test IPv6 again, it uh, doesn't hang around. So testing IPv6 again, and now I get a 10 out of 10 score, and IPv6 is looking good. So let's move over to some speed tests. I'm going to run the first tests with a gigabit LAN connection. I'm going to crack open the desktop speedtest.net app and choose MWeb as the first speed test server. And as you can see, getting some pretty decent throughput speeds on this atomic gigabit line over the Optotel fiber network. Uh, let's choose one more speed test server and see what we get. Alrighty, so yeah, over the 700 megabits mark. Uh, we've seen speeds of up to 930 megabits uh, on the Atomic Gigabit service, but it depends on time of day and which fiber network you have working. So now I'm going to move over to the Wi-Fi speed tests. As you can see, my transaction rate over Wi-Fi is 1200 megabits, and I'm on the AX Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi 6, and I'm also getting about 500-600 megabits, which is substantially faster than the previous Wi-Fi 5 generation uh, throughput, which is pretty darn good. We've seen Wi-Fi throughput over Wi-Fi 6 of up to 700 megabits, but this is pretty respectable and a good illustration of Wi-Fi 6 speeds. So that's all we have time for today. We've looked at the Rayi Wi-Fi 6 router with mesh capabilities. We've seen how to configure it. We've seen some Wi-Fi tweaks. We've seen how to enable IPv6, and we've run some wired and wireless speed tests. So Go ahead and look at one of these for your home office or small office, or look at two if you want a decent Wi-Fi 6 mesh solution that isn't going to break the bank. Thank you.